Hey guys, I'm Frequent in World Photography coming at you with more post-processing tips. Today I want to talk about uh, drawing attention to your subject after the fact. Sometimes when you're out shooting in the field and you've got a big long lens, you need to stop down to f5.6, f8, and you lose a bit of depth of field, uh, the lighting is a little bit flat, whatever the case may be, you get home and you look at your pictures and you say, these just don't have the, the pop that they had before, my subject doesn't stand out like it should, and you wonder what you can do about it. So I've got a couple of quick tips that can draw your viewer's attention right back to your main subject, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. We're also going to, in an unfrequented world first, try screen recording uh, software to record the steps in Photoshop. No more pointing the camera at the screen. That's horrible, I know, sorry guys. I, I tried to do what I could. It didn't work out, we're moving on. So let's record the screen, see how this turns out, and if it's works out the way I hope, that's what we're going to do in the future for all the videos. So let's jump in and get started. Okay guys, here we are in Corel PaintShop Pro X9 and I've selected an image that uh, as you can see was shot with a long lens and it's fairly flat and the lighting is flat as well. So our main subject is this duck in the front and I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips. The first one we're going to do is lighting and we're going to uh, do an adjustment here as always, I always like to start with my sharpness. I do a high pass sharpen, radius of 10, strength 70, soft light. So that right there, if we zoom in 100%, that's without the sharpening, that's with the sharpening. That's my first step. I always add a little bit of sharpening. Then we're going to go into our effects tab with the plugin, the free Nick collection, which we talked about in the last video. And we're going to go to Color Effects Pro 4. Okay, so once we're in here, the effect that I want to use is Darken Lighten Center, okay? So we select that over on the left. And what that does is that's going to give us a spot that we can move around. If we look over on the right side, you can click Place Center, and that allows you to put your highlight wherever you click. So you have to uh, click on Place Center, then click anywhere in your image. And once you've done that, you have to click again on Place Center if you want to move it. So this is our main subject here, this, this duck in the front. So we're going to click on him, and then we're going to play with these sliders. This top slider is center luminosity. That's the size of the, the bright spot that we're creating. So basically I try to keep it just to the main subject a little bit bigger. And, and again, you're gonna uh, look to make sure that you're not blowing any areas out. They're not too bright. Somewhere around 39% looks all right here. And what this uh, filter also does is it darkens the outside edge. So the original photo would have looked like that. And what it's done is it's darkened the outside edge like this. Okay. This bottom slider here will change the size of your center spot. Yes, so this one here changes the brightness, the intensity, sorry. And the bottom one here changes the size. Okay, so. And the smaller, the tighter we make that onto the subject that we've selected, the more you're going to draw the viewer to that. So something like that. And then we click OK at the bottom. And if we look at that now, that image right there draws your viewer to that central duck. And we can view, uh, that's the original image there. And that's the filter that we just applied. So that's my first tip for you guys, is using the uh, dark and light and center in uh, Nick FX. And you can pick whatever subject you want and draw your attention, your viewer's attention to that spot that you put on a canvas, okay? So that's tip number one. Okay guys, so we're back in uh, Corel Paint Shop Pro, the original image. And I've gone ahead and we've done the sharpening, our first step. Tip number two is going to be playing with depth of field, okay? And for this tip, we don't need our Nick uh, effects. We can go right into the Corel Paint Shop effects. And under the effects tab, photo effects, we have the option to do selective focus. Okay, so when we bring that up, we have our original photo is on the left, and on the right is going to be the effect that we apply. 
And so what we can do with this effect here is there's a couple of ways that we can, uh, it's gonna basically simulate depth of field, okay? And there's, uh, your area focus can be selected different ways. You can do a top and a bottom split. You can do this, uh, this split here, which has a three-way bars that you can move to a little more fine-tune adjusting. Or if we click the box on the right, it gives you the circular area, okay? So because our duck's head is kind of round, we're gonna use the circle. And we're gonna move it over top of our main character here. And then we're just gonna use the sliders to drag out. And what I like to do is look, to keep it realistic, if we were to look at this image and this selective focus had been done with a lens, realistically, this duck that's in the background here and this duck that's in the background here would probably be pretty close in terms of out of focus, the bokeh that would be represented. So when we create this circle around our main duck, I like to keep uh, about the same amount on each side. Something like that, okay? Now these slider bars over here, you can change the blur amount. So if we just jack this all the way up, you guys will get a an idea of how much, that's 60% there. That's way too much, it doesn't look realistic for my purposes, but I mean, you can choose whatever you like. I'm usually somewhere between 15 and 18 on this first slider bar, and that really represents what you would get with the true 300 f2.8 or something like that. It's a, a little more realistic, okay? So we're gonna go with 18. And if we use this bottom slider here, feathered edge, that's basically the steps that are used to go from in focus to out of focus, okay? So the lower this number, the faster it's gonna go from in focus to out of focus. The higher the number we select, the smoother that graduation is going to appear. So the more realistic, in essence, uh, the higher the number we have. So I'm gonna choose somewhere around probably 12. Okay, and the saturation, sometimes you have to watch when you pick this for the first time, selective focus, the saturation on default, I believe, is bumped away up. We don't want that. We wanna set that down to zero. We're just going to play with focus. We don't wanna adjust the saturation. And right now I have it. The last time I used it, I obviously put it back on zero. So you just wanna check that. Then we're gonna click OK down on the bottom. And there's the new image. Again, if we look right away, the viewer's eye is drawn to that main duck now because we've nice and purposely blurred out the background. I'll show you the original image. There's the original image. Much more is in focus. And if we blur that out nicely like that, boom, the, the viewer's eye goes right to the eye of that central duck. Now I'm going to show you guys what they look like when we do both of them together. Okay guys, so here I've gone ahead and we have done our depth of field and I've also done the lighting uh, effect as well. And we can click back here to, here's the original image. We'll zoom that in a little bit for you. So here's the original image. And here's the image with both of our filters applied. So you can clearly see the difference We've gone from a flat photo where everything kind of competes for focus and attention to boom, this right here is telling you where to look. What is my main focus? It's that duck's head right there. There you go, guys. A couple of quick tips that uh, help bring your viewer's eye right where you want it to go. Uh, lighting and out of focus adjustments, post-processing. I hope you learned something, had fun, and we'll see you again later this week with more tips.